Hey, hey, what's up? This is George Sabo, and I'm back with Nat20 Gaming to talk to you a little bit more about color theory. Now, last time in the video, we talked um, a bit about color relationships and how colors interact with one another um, in a composition. But today, today I wanted to talk more along the lines of color mixing and how color theory applies to that. So let's get right into it. As you can see, I'm starting here with my friend, the color wheel. A little bit of red. A little bit of yellow. A little bit of blue. As our three primaries. Now, with these three colors, and black and white, you can make just about anything you're looking for. Um, when I paint, this is pretty much all I use, these and black and white. So how do you get so many colors out of just these few? Well, let's look into that. Let's give it a shot. Let's see, uh, let's see how. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna double my color selection. I've got my primaries, let's mix up some secondaries. And if you remember last time, we talked about different colors having uh, different levels of power or potency. And you always want to start with the less potent color, the weaker color, and mix in the stronger. So we start with yellow, mix in just a touch of red. To make my orange. On a side note, um, nothing rhymes with orange. There we go. Yeah, that's a nice little mix there. And then we're going to mix up, start with some yellow right down here. Make my favorite color. Just green. Stir that up just a little more. All right. Last of the secondary colors, grab a little bit of blue, and mix in a little bit of red to make purple. there. So let's grab a little more red. Not too much. Don't want to overkill. Nice. There we go. And I got a purple. looking a little black on screen so I'll tell you what just for effect I'm gonna add just a smidgen of white to it just just for you guys at home so you can see that a little better and we mix in with the purple a little bit goes a long way Oh, 
That's a little better. Looks a little gray. Let me add a little red. That's just the last one for now, I promise, and then I'll move on. I have um, a lot of fun mixing colors. It's it's actually my favorite part of painting. Um, it's it's less of the painting itself and more of just the mixing of the colors. There we go. Yeah, it looks purple enough. Okay, so we have gone from three colors to six colors. Let's go from six colors to twelve colors. And remember, this is starting out from just three. I'm going to take my orange here, and now we're going to mix up what we call tertiary colors. So right in between, we add a little bit of red to make a reddish orange. But then, we go to the flip side of that orange, drop that down here, and add a smidge of yellow to it. Technically, I probably should have added the yellow first and then added the orange to it, <laughs> but uh, not too big of a deal. There we go. And now we've got a yellow orange. Then. Let's do the same thing with the other two secondaries. I'm scoop up a little bit of this green here. And I did it again. Probably should have added the yellow first. Oh well. C'est la vie, as they say. To make a wunderbar slime green color. Let's go with our purple. Add that there. And add a touch of blue to it. And make a bluish purple. And then grab some of it. And add some red to it. Okay. Make kind of a mauve color. Excellent, excellent. So we've gone from three colors to six colors to 12 colors. Um, and, and there are even more. Generally, we stop here at tertiary because I, I don't know that we've come up with a name for the other one, quadriary. Uh, and then after that, would it be pentiary? I don't know. It gets, naming gets ridiculous. So at this point, we just stop naming things and start making colors. For example, if I were to take some of this orange here and just a dab of red, I can mix this even further and make a redder orange. So we have orange, red orange, redder orange, red. Um, again, I could do the same thing here and make add a little base orange back into it. And now we have a slightly more orange reddish orange if that makes sense and and now you see why when you dig through a pack of crayola crayons they've got all kinds of crazy names like um tangerine and and uh oh hell i don't know sunshine and and whatnot but yeah at some point you just got to stop 
making names for these things uh, and just saying, I want uh, that one right there. So you've got a near infinite amount of colors in between these different spaces that you can get just subtle variations on these colors. But wait, there's more. There's more that we can get. And that's even, even before we start playing around with tints and shades and black and white and whatnot. Um, you've got the base of each of these colors, or what's known as their hue. But we can take and we can desaturate that hue. We can make yet another version of that color. Um, let me show you an example. Let's start with red. Let's desaturate some red. Uh, the word saturation just means how close to its pure color is it. Um, for example, uh, leather. Leather. Everybody's like, well, leather's, leather's brown. Well, you gotta look really close. It's, um, it's more of a reddish brown. Well, how do we get that reddish brown? How would I take that red and turn it into a brown? And when you ask a lot of people, their first inclination is, well, I'm going to add a little bit of black to it. And that doesn't work. That doesn't work because then it's just a darker red. What you want, what you're looking for, is a desaturated red. And the way you desaturate a color, let me see if I've got enough of this green to do it. Yeah, I do still. Cool. The way you desaturate a color is you take the color... I hope I got enough green to knock that down. Um, and you mix in its complement or its opposite. So there's my red. I'm going to scoop up as much of this green as I can get a hold of here and mix it in. And what we've done is we have knocked down the saturation. We've desaturated it, um, muted it a little bit. And what I could do is I could go even further, take this color here, and I don't know if I've got enough green left. You know what? I don't have green, but I have yellow and blue. So tell you what, I will just mix up some more green. Let me put my little palette here. Probably not the exact same green. Pretty close. I can take that green and I can mix it into the desaturated red to desaturate it even further. Take it a little closer to brown. Right? Oh, but wait, there's more. What if I took this color? smidgen of green there. And then I take it down towards green. And now it's less of a desaturated red and more of a desaturated green. You can see how I went from red and gradated to green. I can actually do this throughout the entire color wheel. I could go from blue to orange. Um, I can go from yellow to purple. I can start going with the tertiary colors, and eventually everything would meet in the center as kind of a neutral brown. Um, and again, like the, like the primaries, the secondaries, tertiaries, and whatever you want to call these guys here, there's an infinite number of gradations between this red and this green. Um, so you can start to see the sheer volume of colors that we're dealing with with just those base three. But wait, there's still more. Um, now, we're going to add a little bit of black and a little bit of white into the mix to make what we call tints and shades. Every color has their tints and has their shades. A tint is simply 
any color plus white. So let's take a little bit of red. And we will add a little bit of white to it. White's pretty strong. Um, a little bit goes a long way. So you want to just add a touch at a time. Keep in mind, this is a, a pretty basic tutorial. You can go even further with it. Um, there are warm variations and cool variations of yellow. So if you wanted to start playing around with um, how those affect your color wheel, feel free. I'm not gonna get into that right now, um, but I did wanna mention it. Yes, I do know that you have warm and cool variations of different, uh, different colors. So there's our tint, pink, right? And here's some more red. And again, like, uh, like white, a little bit of black goes a long way toward changing up that color. A little bit of a, let's see, too much. Too much overkill. Ah, there it goes. Oh, I die. Um, let's add a little bit more red to that so you can actually see what that is and it's not just some black inky mass there we go what we end up with is more of like a dark kind of brick red bingo excellent not bad not bad and all this from three bottles of paint all this from just three bottles and and there's so much more um, I can take I can take this pink and I can further add white to it. Um, there was a color that I used to like to to paint with. Um, I'm trying to remember the 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 name of it. It was like Nurgling pink or something weird, but it was a uh, it was actually like a light purplish uh, purplish pink. And so maybe I'll take this pink and I'll add some blue to it. Yeah, that's a little too much blue. So I'm going to add some red. And you're not going to nail a color on your first try, you know? Play with it. That's the fun. That's where the enjoyment comes in, is slowly adjusting the color until it is right where you want it to be. Nice, we're getting close. If I remember right, it was kind of a pallid fleshy pink Pepto-Bismol color. It was really beautifully disgusting. Yeah. It's getting close to it. I'm actually going to save that color. I may use it here in a minute on something. Hey, that's looking good. A little more red. It's not quite pink enough yet. Still too... Yeah, there we go. And a little bit of white. Voila! So, play with your colors. Experiment with them. Um, you know how they function now. You know that you can make 
the secondary colors by mixing the primaries together. You know that you can make tertiary colors by mixing a secondary and a primary that are next to each other and analogous on the color wheel. You know that you can make desaturated variants of colors by mixing their complements. Play with this idea. Move around the color wheel and see what you can make. I hope this helps you out. Um, again, this has been George Sabo for Nat20 Gaming. Have fun and I'll see you next time.